coming up on the Purposeful Podcast. So hmm. he used this flight as a fundraiser for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. And so he contributed something like $100 million to the hospital in this effort. And I want to say um, Elon Musk put in like 50 million on his own too. So he threw a nice, a nice contribution. But overall, they ended up raising $243 million for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Wow. And that's, you know, that's awesome. You're listening to the Purposeful Podcast. All right. Welcome to this episode of the Purposeful Podcast. I'm Matt. I am Psyche. We're very, very happy to have you here with us. And um, I want to start out this program um, by giving a, a shout out of thanks to those of you who have engaged with us on Facebook this week. Uh, we're getting started doing some outreach over there, and uh, we've had tremendous feedback especially um, with regards to some of the, the posts that have been put up about philanthropy. And uh, Psyche and I have been talking, and so we're going we're gonna to change up the show a little bit, and we're going to test kind of a new format and see if this works going forward. So we're glad to have you here. We hope you like the new uh, format. And uh, whatever you think about it, we certainly would like your feedback. So remember to uh, reach out to us. You can do that on Facebook. You can reach out by email, uh, whatever your preferred method of communication is. But we're definitely looking forward to hearing from you and see how you like it. So with that being said, um, man, how are you doing this week? You know, I'm doing fantastic. I... Uh... I feel blessed every day we get to live the life we're choosing here. And, uh, you know, I couldn't ask for anything more. How about yourself? Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, you know, I, I've had my ups and my downs this week. And, and you said something when we were kind of doing our, our discussion before the show, uh, that, that you've said it before. I really, really like it. And that is, I've never had a bad day, just had a, a bad moment in within the day, you know, and, and that's a great attitude to have. And uh, so that's, that's my answer to you. I've had a couple of moments, but overall, blessed, highly favored, no complaints. That's awesome. I love to hear it. And in full disclosure, I stole that from a sports radio host I used to listen to when I was a kid growing up. <laughs> ah. So I liked it that much. I've said it ever since. <laughs> well, very good. Do you happen to remember who that was? Uh, yeah, I'll give him a shout out. You know, that was Howard Eskin is his name. And believe it or not, he's actually still a sports talk uh, host for a radio station called WIP in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. All right. Well, Howard Eskin, kudos to you. Thank you for lending that wisdom to the world. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're going to borrow it and continue to promote it. How about that? Exactly. <laughs> it's, uh, we, we got it. You know, I'm a big fan of taking the positive things that we like that other people do. And, and it can be various people and just adapting it to our own use. Absolutely. It's kind of like paying it forward, right? You know, you take yep. something good and you give it to someone else and hopefully it keeps going and going and going. So that's awesome. Exactly. But yeah. Well, very things, good. Things have been going good. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that, man. Um, so to start off this show, we're going to twist it around a little bit. And this week, uh, you've done some checking into who you want to highlight for this week's uh, person who's given back uh, the philanthropy. So what did you come up with? Yeah, so this was pretty cool. Um, I was looking into philanthropy, you know, and, and last week you talked about Dolly Parton and her offer to pay uh, the college tuition and books and everything for every one of her employees at Dollywood. So it's like, okay, well, what can I find? that that would be awfully cool like that. So the 
philanthropist that I wanted to highlight, his name is Jared Isaacman, and he is the founder of a payments processing company called Shift4. And uh, he's done very well for himself. He's now a billionaire. And um, he is uh, more recently known for being uh, a member of the all tourism SpaceX flights. Mm. In fact, um, he purchased the very first flight that was an all tourist flight. And the reason that I chose this story was that it was super cool. Here's a guy who has the resources, he's pursuing a personal dream of his. Um, you know, and so we talk about living a fulfilling and purposeful life, you know, so he's, he's pursuing his dream here doing the SpaceX flight, but he, he decided to kind of tie in a philanthropic effort into it. So hmm. he used this flight as a fundraiser for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. And so he contributed something like a hundred million dollars to the hospital in this effort. And I want to say um, Elon Musk put in like 50 million on his own too. So he threw a nice, a nice contribution. But overall, they ended up raising $243 million for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Wow. And that's you know that's awesome. That is a phenomenal organization yeah. because of the services that they provide yeah. to these families, especially these little kids, you know, and they do research, but they, they change people's lives, you know, saving people's lives yeah. that are in need. So, you know, for him to have been an entrepreneur, created this company, had phenomenal success turns that into pursuit of a personal dream going into space, but then tying that all in together decides, you know, how can I do, how can I turn this into something good for, for someone else, you know, and that's, awesome. that's almost a quarter of a billion dollars that they raised for St. Jude with this one event. So man, that's a game changer. Kudos to him. That's awesome. And Elon Musk, if he was, if he was part of that. Yeah, he was. So awesome. So Jared Isaacman, you are the philanthropist of the week. So good yep. job. Good job. Some, someone to aspire to be like. Yes. So very good. So with that, um, tonight's show, uh, we're going to talk about some current events. Um, obviously, inflation has been something that we've talked about a lot lately. Um, there have been some events in the news that are going to impact inflation. Um, so we'll talk about those and we'll talk about the potential impact and maybe even get into a little bit about what you might be able to do um, to, to cushion the blow, so to speak. And then we're going to introduce another segment for the first time, which will be a savings hack. So that's something that we'd like to do on a regular basis. I know Psyche's got a good one lined up for us tonight. So uh, with that, we're going to kick this out to our intro. You're listening to The Purposeful Podcast with Matt Fiebig and Psyche Philios. So we're going to start tonight's show with current events. And I guess I should stop saying tonight because... Whoever's watching or listening to this may not be listening to it at night, but at least now y'all know we record at night. Um, so we're going to kick it off with the top uh, financial stories of the week. And this one is actually geopolitical in nature. Uh, Russia has invaded Ukraine. They uh, decided to... The way they framed it, they, they recognized two provinces in eastern Ukraine, uh, decided to recognize them as independent political entities, and they've moved peacekeeping troops in, uh, supposedly at the request of the locals, 
Um, so we'll see how this goes. But uh, Vladimir Putin and Russia have indeed moved into Ukraine. Um, the, the impact of this is definitely going to be felt economically uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, Russia is a tremendous exporter of energy. Uh, they export oil, they export natural gas. Um, in fact, you know, one of the, the things that I saw was the response of the German government. They have, uh, at least for the time being, they have suspended the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which was uh, basically a direct pipeline of natural gas from Russia into Germany. Yep. So that's going to impact energy prices throughout the world. Um, you also have the impact on the food markets because Russia and Ukraine combined to produce something like 25% of the world's wheat crop. And that's a pretty substantial thing. So if there's a disruption in that market, that's going to see food prices have upward pressure. And then um, Russia is also a major supplier of palladium, which is a key element in the production of microchips. And as uh, those of you who've been paying attention to, to the inflation situation know, uh, the shortage of microchips has really devastated the auto market, you know, which has just led to explosive growth in used car and new car prices there. So that's a big deal. So um, I'm sure you've been paying some attention to, to this story, Psyche. What have, what have you been thinking about the potential impact? Well, I'll tell you what, let me, uh, it hits close to home. And, and I'll, first and foremost, I'll, I'll explain to our audience why. Um, one of my children, my son is in the military, he's in the army, and he could potentially be deployed. Um, his unit could be deployed uh, as a result of all this. So obviously, that's something that is at the forefront of my mind, personally. But I also want to take that opportunity to, uh, you know, obviously, thank our men and women in, in, in the uniform, right, in all forms and fashions of our military for the services they provide. Absolutely. And uh, so, but moving on, the, you know, Russia's a powerhouse and they have a lot of influence on in a lot of different sectors in our economy. It, it's one of the downsides when the world, uh, you know, ventures to become a global economy where they're so relying upon each other. Um, when, when something happens like this, we're, we're going to feel the fallout. So, um, it's just hard to gauge what that's going to be at this point. You know, you, you hope and pray that um, Russia doesn't go through and invade. But at this point, it's just unclear what's going to happen. It looks like they may. You're not sure if Ukraine's going to, you know, get some happy feet and maybe initiate something on their end. So um, one of the biggest things I think of is market volatility well, on my end for me personally and people's finances and business finances. And if Russia does decide to invade, you're going to, you're going to see a lot of wild swings in a, in a pretty quick amount of time. Well, and, you know, they've, they've already put troops in a couple of the Eastern provinces. So, you know, technically they've, they've at least invaded some, it's not a full out invasion of the country. Um, you know, and I, I think that's, that's where your point comes in and, and is absolutely correct that, you know, we're kind of waiting at this point to see, are they going to go further? Are they going to escalate this to the next level? How much is Ukraine going to sit back and take before they maybe punch back? Um, there's, there's a lot of unease right now because there's a lot of uncertainty about how this is going to play out, but everybody knows it's kind of a dangerous situation. Um, one of the interesting things, like you said, is, is the impact on what's now a global economy. So even though the United States, where we're based, we're not a major import and export partner with Russia directly. I mean, we are a, a partner. We, we exchange goods and services, but it's not 
like a significant portion of our economic performance is um, dependent on them or vice versa. But because of the globalized nature of things, you know, for example, the, the energy disruption in Europe, well, that's going to lead to upward pressure on natural gas prices. Yeah. And there are an awful lot of folks in the United States during winter time that rely on natural gas to heat their homes. Um, the same can be said for oil. You know, there are significant numbers of people in the States that use heating oil to, to heat their homes. And uh, the, the price of crude right now is near $100 a barrel. And there's some speculation that it could go as high as $120 a barrel or higher. You know, I, I want to say like, 16 months ago, it was around 40 or $45 a barrel. So that's been an area where there's been significant inflation. And, you know, you and I have talked about inflation in the past. One of the interesting things is that when you hear a news report, a lot of times they say, oh, well, the annualized rate of inflation is 7.5%. Okay, well, not everything inflates the same way over time. And one of the things that has inflated extremely quickly, much more significantly, is energy. Um, I want to say energy prices are up 20 to 30 percent in most places in the United States now compared to a year ago. So that's a really big deal. Um, what do people do about that? You know, what if if you're in a spot where you've got a difficult choice to make financially um, to to figure out how you're going to pay your energy bill and still put food on the table? Um, what are some ways that that you can make the ends meet? Well, you have your obvious ways of you know if if it's in the winter like it is now and you have the heat on turn that thermostat down a little bit instead of you know if you're a family that keeps it at 71 72 degrees you know maybe put it at 69 you know learn to live with it just a little bit cooler maybe get a, a, a an extra blanket put some sock warmers on something um, there's small steps you can do to cut back on your usage one of the bigger things you could probably do we touched on this before is the vehicles you drive right i mean if you've got a, a vehicle that guzzles gas at 10 to 12 miles a gallon, maybe it's time to look at something that could get you 25, 30, or even 40 miles a gallon. So yeah. they're out there. Maybe, maybe this is a good time. Uh, and here's an interesting side uh, thought, you know, kind of sidestepping that, but, or a byproduct of this, I guess you could say, is maybe this is the time for a family to think about getting, uh, getting away from fossil fuels and, and trying to help the environment better, maybe going to an electric vehicle or, or other items they can change. But um, those are a couple of things that I would do real quick to, to, is to cut down on the energy consumption. You know, that's an interesting question. Um, do you save money moving to electric? Because I know the cost of electricity is going up as well. But if, if you get more bang for the buck in terms of using electricity instead of using a, a petrochemical powered car, yeah. um, you know, that might be a good way to go. I'd have to look into that a little further, but that's a really good idea. Um, you know, one of the things that they, they talked about also was the potential impact on food prices. So, sure. you know, I know that that's been... A situation now for a while um, that has impacted my household really not not so much because of um, our inability to to go out to eat or anything like that it's just because it's becoming so much more expensive that the the decision uh, making the decision making has changed you know, the value for the dollar is, is less than it used to be when you go out yeah. to eat. And it's harder to justify, 
long waits and not the greatest service and not the greatest food when when your bill is 20 percent higher than it was a year ago or two years ago so that's one thing but um you know i've noticed even grocery shopping i don't know to what extent this is a national phenomenon but i am having the hardest time finding spaghetti uncooked spaghetti noodles yeah. You know, and I thought about that because when I was reading about Russia and Ukraine supplying something like 25% of the wheat in the world, um, you know, obviously semolina wheat is what is used to make most pastas. And I, I've already had a hard time finding <laughs> pasta noodles. And, uh, you know, it, it may be something that's even harder to come by, but think about everything that, uh, that wheat goes into all the different bread products and pasta products and things like that. So, yeah. um, you know, that's something to be aware of. You may, you may want to explore alternatives. Uh, we've been looking at things like rice pasta instead of wheat pasta. Yeah. And uh, maybe if you've got a gluten allergy, you know about that sort of thing already, but, uh, <laughs> But it's worth exploring alternatives, you know? I mean, one of the cool things, at least, about, about the way the world is right now is we do have options. You know, if, if, one, if, if one product gets really pricey, um, there's a chance that a different type of product may not be experiencing the same price inflation. So maybe that's something to look for is... is how can you change one type of food into something comparable, but something that's less expensive, like moving from a wheat pasta to a rice pasta or moving from, um, you know, maybe beef to a chicken or a pork product instead, when you're looking at your proteins, because beef is getting pricey too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so, it's all getting pricey. Well, and I had an issue with uh, elbow macaroni the other day you yeah. were talking about spaghetti pasta the shelves were empty and um that shows you how interconnected we all are right any little disruption whether it's russia getting ready to invade or some truckers at a at a at the border we see the impact of that very quickly in the way our society is now so Unfortunately, that's kind of a, a downside of having a global economy and moving as fast as we do, that it shows you when the, it's a big machine and it's got a it's got to flow right nice and smooth. And when you get a cog in a wheel, it doesn't take long to feel the effects. That's true. So I think the uh, the big takeaway from this is that uh, there's going to continue to be pressure, inflationary pressure. You know, we've, we've talked about the underlying causes of inflation before and things like monetary policy contribute to it. Um, things like the supply chain uh, issues. And, and this is where this particular story falls in is it's going to be a significant, potentially a significant disruption in the supply chain. So even though the, the Federal Reserve is looking at taking some steps at um, changing the, the monetary policy and, and making the interest rates go up and hopefully you know, pulling back a, a little bit on the monetary supply, um, that, that the effects of that could be offset by these disruptions in the supply chain. So it definitely is something that's going to bear, you know, paying attention to, to how this plays out. Yeah. And, and what I'd like to reiterate to, to our listeners is not to overreact. You know, don't, don't jump in a, a, a decision, whether it's personal, finance, business, anything, uh, without analyzing it. It's even more important in times like this. Uh, disruption is a good word, and that's what we're going to see. And you're going to see unsteadiness, volatility everywhere. Um, yeah. 
an, another key word is perception, right? Even if this, even if Russia doesn't go through, what Wall Street or you know all our so-called uh, experts and everybody else, what they perceive is going to affect the markets as well and the prices of some of our goods. So just pay attention and and it's more important now than ever just to just to have knowledge and and be prepared and don't make a rash choice. You know that that's an excellent point and I I'd, I'd like to build on that just for a moment. You know, this is the purposeful podcast and what we want to do um, kind of the reason for being for us is we want to help people achieve financial goals and live in such a way that they're able to pursue things that are meaningful in their lives. And, you know, that includes your, your relationships, your families, that includes, you know, whatever your, your goals and dreams are, you know, like going to, to outer space. Um, it's going to be different for everybody, yeah. but you know, what, what's important to you at a fundamental level. And in, in tumultuous times like these, it's that much more important that you keep your eyes on the prize and that you don't lose focus and panic because having that goal, having that aim, having that dream, um, and working through whatever obstacle that may come, that's what's going to carry you through and get you to the other side of this, you know, and hopefully it won't be super painful on the way, but whatever struggles and obstacles you face, that's going to give you what you need to get through it. I think, I think it's good to remember that. I agree. Well said. This is our new segment on savings hacks. So this was this was your idea, Psyche, and I think it's a fantastic idea. Um, these are things that hopefully we can throw out every week that will help you save a little bit of money or um, you know turn things your way when it comes to your personal balance sheet, right? So yeah. what do you got for us this week? Well, I'm good for one great idea a year. I got this one out of the way early. <laughs> Yikes. I expect more from you. <laughs> I can always attempt to overachieve. <laughs> oh, I I have high expectations, but you've always given me a reason to have them. So I, <laughs> very I know good, you're going to do fine. Well, I appreciate that. So uh, maybe, if, you know, I want to try to highlight some things, at least especially for the first several um versions of this segment. We are going through inflationary times. It's obviously top topic for just about everybody if you're breathing. Um, so uh, savings hacks are something that's top of mind for most folks. We need to stretch our dollar a little further. And uh, the topic I want to discuss today is should you buy the extra insurance for your car rental. You know, most people I would imagine have the need to rent a car once or twice a year, possibly if they're going somewhere, something happens to their vehicle. And we go, you know, you can go to these booking sites or you could go to the actual vehicle site themselves and book. And as you're going through the checkout process, as most people are aware, at the very end, you're given a list of add-ons. They're trying to upsell you. One of them upsells are uh, car insurance. Um, in a sense, I guess you would call it full coverage car insurance is, is what it basically is. They want you to pay upwards of $36 a day. I saw the, other, the last time I did it. Uh, upwards of $36 a day for the convenience of knowing that if you do something or something happens to that vehicle while you're driving it, they won't come after you for the damages. So, uh, you know, how nice of them, right? How generous, you know, for $36 a day, they're going to leave you alone if you, if you crash their vehicle. Well, what most people are not aware of is two ways you can avoid uh, paying for that car insurance, but still getting that car insurance. 
So just to be clear, I do not recommend buying that insurance through the car rental company because it's usually just way too expensive, as I've stated. Normally, if you were checked with your own private car insurance company, you already have that coverage. Uh, and number two, if you are booking through with certain credit cards or debit cards you're using, a lot mm -hmm. of them credit cards will provide that coverage to you as a perk of that credit card. So keep that in mind. Uh, and and if you, you usually know when you're going to need a rental car. So before you need a rental car again, check them two ideas out and see if you have coverage on one of them. And if you don't, find out how much it'll cost to get that coverage if you need it, because it's probably not going to be $36 a year, let alone $36 a day. All right. Well, that's a great point. You know, I had been there myself. Uh, I actually was one of those dupes that bought the car insurance one time. And then it occurred to me, you know, I really need to check and see if I already have it. You know, I, I was kind of in the heat of the moment. I needed to make a quick decision because yeah. I was at the rental counter. Um, had I had my head screwed on straight at the moment, I probably would have said, you know what, even though I'm going to have to get back at the back of the line, let me call my insurance company first or let me call my credit card company first and find out if I've already got this coverage. Yeah. Because... Yeah. 36 bucks a day is not cheap. If you, no. if you rent a car for a week, you've most likely paid more for your week of car insurance than what you pay on your normal policy for an entire month. <laughs> so, you know, that's a huge way to save some money because, you know, I mean, right there, $36 a day, five days, it's 180 bucks. Yep. That's not a small chunk of change to keep in your pocket. Yeah. And it's money you're you in most cases, in a lot of cases, I should say, it's money you have already spent and you just aren't aware right. of it. You already you already have the coverage. You just may not know it. Exactly. Exactly. So, so everyone check that out. That's the savings hack of the week. We are also going to be introducing a segment that we would like to do on a monthly basis. And because of what we are trying to do here at the Purposeful Podcast, uh, values are very important to us. It's, it's not just what you do, but it's how you do it. And making those choices, uh, those, those kinds of choices are guided by our values. And so we're going to highlight every month a value that is critical for your personal financial and your business success. And we're going to kind of get into why that is. So the value for this month is integrity. So that's a big word, isn't it? Integrity. So what does that mean to you? And, and how does that apply to your success? I tell you what, it's a huge word. And that's probably had the most impact of any word I can think of it, that's gotten me to where I am now. You know, I always used to say to my children, do the right thing when people aren't looking. And, and, and that's what integrity means to me, right? The integrity means just doing the right thing. Um, and if you live with integrity, if you go through life just trying to do the right thing and you, you have morals, you have, you have that value where you're just trying to help your fellow human, there's, there's, there's nothing stopping you. It's, you have a way, you know, I'm a big believer of the energy or the karma, if you will, we put into this world comes back to us. And, you know, we reap what we sow and integrity is just high up on that list. You know, just try to live the right way, try to do the right thing and you'll get blessed in return. That's funny. I think about, you, you talked about karma. That's kind of uh, something that comes from the Eastern religions, but it's not a foreign concept, even in the Judeo-Christian religions. One of my favorite biblical stories is, 
the story of Jacob. And um, it's, it's funny because he swindles his, his older brother Esau out of the birthright. And, you know, you think, oh, okay, well, he's one of the patriarchs, right? He actually becomes Israel. And, you know, so that must have been God's doing and so on and so forth. Well, read the whole story. He, he <laughs> gets what's coming. You know, the, the swindling does not go unpunished. He ends up uh, getting kind of swindled by his uncle Laban for 21 years. <laughs> As a, you know, and there's definitely innuendo that he's getting... Uh, just as well as he gave. So um, yeah. it it's something that is a value. You know, you get what you you deserve. That that's something that's that's across a lot of different uh, world religions. But um, when you talk about integrity, you know, you mentioned something huge there uh, about how you treat your fellow your fellow individual, your fellow human being. That is, that's huge. You know, the, the capitalist system, you could argue, wouldn't even function very well were it not for integrity. You know, and, and I know that's not necessarily obvious, but think about it for a little bit. You know, what makes, what makes commerce work? If I'm entering into an agreement with you that I'm going to purchase a good or a service that you're going to provide, integrity has to be at the heart of that. Yeah. Because if I don't believe that I'm going to get value for my money, I'm not going to give you my money. Exactly. And if you don't believe that you're going to get fair payment for your good or your service, then you're not going to offer that. Yeah. So you know, integrity is really at the heart of what makes this all possible. But it's a personal choice. Every single time, every single act, every single transaction, um, you have to think about the golden rule, you might say, right? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If, if you can establish that you're willing to do that and you have every reason to believe that that the person on the other end of the transaction is also doing that boy it makes life a lot easier i mean think about think about how things work when you use your credit card for example or your debit card you pull out this little piece of plastic and you go up to a electronic machine that has a number pad on it and you insert a chip, you swipe it, you touch it, however you do your transaction. And you just know that it's going to work. And the vendor, the retailer is willing to let you walk out of their store with valuable stuff because they believe that the system is going to work. Well, what happens if people were lying, cheating and stealing in the intermediary processes. Well, we wouldn't have faith that the system was going to function. And so we wouldn't, we wouldn't do it. And so we'd have to come up with a better way to do it, which would be a lot more expensive. <clears throat> so, you know, in, integrity not just makes it possible to have the transaction, but it helps the transaction to be as inexpensive as possible. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of costs involved with being a cheat. Yeah. Well, think about something as simple as me calling a service company to provide a service to me at my house. And they tell me they're going to be there at three o'clock on a Tuesday. And for one reason or another, they can't make it on time at three o'clock. Well, there are a lot of legitimate reasons why somebody would run behind, as we know in our personal lives. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we hope they have the integrity to call us before three o'clock and let us know, hey, we're running behind. And that's all the consumer generally wants is a little heads up. Hey, we're running behind. 
little integrity there. We're being honest about it. And this is when we're going to be there. And 95% of the time, the consumer is going to understand that, right? They're going to say, yeah, sure. We, we run into the same issue. We understand. Thanks for calling. Well, that's how you move forward with a relationship together and you can keep doing business. Uh, whereas otherwise, if you don't call that person, that person ends up calling you at 3.30 when you haven't shown up. And it's uh, an entirely different conversation at that point. <laughs> you know, it's, it's very interesting that you bring that particular example up because that, that really points to another reason why integrity is so important. Um, if you're a business owner, your goal is to get customers that come back again and again and again. You know, the, the repeat customer is the golden ticket. And you may see a, a situation that you can take advantage of one time where you might be able to swindle someone. You know, you might be able to lie to them and, and convince them that they need something that they don't need. Or you might be able to overcharge them for something. but a lot of times, whatever benefit you think you might derive from that is isolated to that yeah. single transaction. Yeah. And then you lose them. Yeah. You want to have a customer for life. And the way you do that is to treat that person with integrity because then they, they know that you're going to assume responsibility for the things that you're responsible yep. for, and you're going to treat them with respect. And that's what they want. And if, if they have that, it's not that price necessarily becomes a secondary issue, but it doesn't, it's certainly not the only issue at that point, because there's something to be said for someone that's going to treat you the right way. And, and the value that comes with that. There are a lot of folks out there that ne won't necessarily do that. So when you find someone who does, you've got an incentive to stick with them for sure. You know, I remember one, one thing that, that the listeners may not know about me is that I, I used to work in debt collection. I was a credit card collection uh, specialist for, for a while. And I learned an awful lot when I was doing credit card collections, because I, I had a lot of high performers around me, but a lot of them would say almost anything to collect that payment. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they'd, they'd get right up to the boundary of what was illegal and what might be considered harassment, you know, and they, they'd push the envelope right out to the, that limit. But after time, I became a, a supervisor and got into some of the management. And I'd see reports and I'd follow some of these, these people who had the delinquent accounts. You know, and a lot of times when they, when they came across someone who had that mentality, I'll say whatever it takes to do whatever it takes, even if I've got to bully somebody you know, they might make the payment once, but then they would never pick up the phone again. Yeah. You know, so we won the battle and we lost the war because we'd end up writing off the account, you know, exactly. the, the lesson that I learned from that was even for someone who's, who's past due and behind on their bills, that person deserved just as much integrity from me as anybody else. And in fact, if I was going to help that person to resolve their issue and bring their account current and keep it current, that was going to require me to treat them with integrity. So that was a huge lesson that I learned in that, in that venue. Yeah. You know, I, that's a great point. I wasn't thinking about it in those terms, but when you brought that up, it hit me and, you know, treat everybody like you want to be treated. Right. And, yeah. and, and just take the time. It's not easier. It, you know, you got to slow down and it's a little bit harder, but it's the right thing to do. And it's how you build relationships. And 
you never know, just kind of like a, uh, a byproduct result of having integrity. Cause there's nothing wrong with reaping benefits of because you've acted with integrity, right? Yeah. Um, a, a positive byproduct of that is you'll develop relationships and over time you'll notice what them relationships do for you. Um, you, you will benefit from them relationships. They're, they're what we call strategic relationships, right? Um, you know, you're, you're, there's no telling, you know, our parents used to say to us and a lot of our listeners, parents probably said, don't burn your bridges, right? Well, right. that's what it is. Build that relationship, live with integrity, because you never know when you're going to run into that person and you never know in what capacity you will run into them. In. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely right. Well, I think that's a good place to wrap up for this topic. And I think it's a good place to wrap up for this episode. So we appreciate you sticking with us. If you've been listening on your favorite podcast directory, please subscribe to our feed. Uh, and if you are listening to a directory that gives you the, the opportunity to uh, rate us, review us, and leave some feedback, uh, we'd love for you to do that, um, especially if you can give us one of those five-star reviews. That would be wonderful. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube or Rumble, we appreciate having you here with us. Um, we'd like to also mention our uh, Facebook friends. Uh, there have been a lot of you providing great feedback on, uh, on Facebook. We'd like to encourage you to look out for us. Uh, you can find us at Convergent Digital Media on Facebook. And finally, we'd like to invite you to join us at our locals community. You can find us there at thepurposefulpodcast.locals.com. And if you have any ideas, if you have any feedback, if you'd like us to talk about a particular topic or answer a question, please reach out to us. You can reach us at the Purposeful Podcast at convergentdigitalmedia.com. Thanks again. We appreciate you listening and we look forward to having you back again on the Purposeful Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Purposeful Podcast with Matt Feebig and Psyche Filios. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure to join us on Locals at thepurposefulpodcast.locals.com and find us on YouTube and Rumble by searching for the Purposeful Podcast. If you like this podcast, don't forget to rate and review. This has been a production of Convergent Digital Media. Visit ConvergentDigitalMedia.com for more info. Thanks again for listening to the Purposeful Podcast.